The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the great feast of Pentecost, which is the third greatest feast of the Church's year. Fifty days, hence the name Pentecost, fifty days after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles just as Jesus had promised. Pentecost, we, all, we already know that um, Christ had already laid the foundations of his church by calling the twelve apostles and tutoring them over three years. But now, Pentecost Day, he officially launches it. So, to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass on this great feast, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard the sound of a mighty wind which came from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting, and something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled each one, be bewildered to hear these men speaking in his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own language about the marvels of God. The Word of the Lord. 
Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your riches. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. The sequence. Holy Spirit, Lord of light, from the clear celestial height, thy pure beaming radiance give. Come, thou Father of the poor, come with treasures which endure, come, thou light of all that live. Thou of all consolers best, thou the soul's delightful guest, dost refreshing peace bestow. Thou in toil, our comfort sweet, pleasant coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. Light immortal, light divine, visit thou these hearts of thine, and our inmost being fill. If thou take thy grace away, nothing pure in man will stay, all his good is turned to ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour thy dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. Thou on us, who evermore thee confess and thee adore, with thy sevenfold gifts descend. Give us comfort when we die, give us life with thee on high, give us joys that never end. Alleluia, alleluia, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we read out a pastoral letter for Pentecost from the Catholic bishops of England and Wales. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the solemnity of Pentecost reminds us that everything which, which exists, every person and the whole of creation is a gift of God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. God our loving Father creates and continues to give life to the world through his word, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church, which we celebrate at Pentecost, is not something separate from creation. God's revelation of himself in creation is inseparable from the revelation of his love for us in Christ and in his desire to live in us through the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit is always and everywhere the Lord and giver of life, and the voice of Pentecost is echoed in the voice of creation being transformed into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now in this liberty as God's children, we call on the Spirit to renew the face of the earth, and as his children, we are called in turn to use this liberty for the good of creation and for the good of all that brings life. Our world, God's creation, is a precious gift to us. 
It is our common home entrusted to each generation. But how have we used that glorious liberty? How do we honour this precious gift? Are we really demonstrating love, care and respect for our common home? As we celebrate Pentecost this year, we are acutely aware of the damage that continues to be inflicted on the earth and the repercussion of the well-being of our brothers and sisters both here and in, our other, and in our own countries and more especially in the poorest countries of the world. Pope Benedict XVI and Pope Francis have both taught us that everything is interconnected and interdependent. The way we live our everyday lives has an impact on everyone and on the whole earth. The urgency of the situation and the enormity of the challenges we, pay, we face have spurned us to speak out together this Pentecost Sunday as bishops of England, Wales, Scotland about the role that the Catholic Church and our faith must play in our shared care of God's gift to us. For all too long, we have either been ignorant of or ignored the systematic exploitation of our planet and the unsustainable consumption of our resources. While accepting the crucial need and demand for energy for the benefit of the poorest of our brothers and sisters, the provision of our energy must nonetheless be by means which radically reduce the use of carbon-based fuels. In our political thinking, there must be a new global understanding of the world where nations recognize our common responsibility for the dignity of all people and their rights to sustainable livelihoods in authentic freedom. Pope Francis speaks of a global politics and he looks beyond our own needs and the needs of all, most especially the poor and the marginalized. But we cannot leave the healing of our common home and the well-being and care of our brothers and sisters merely to a response from industry and governments. Our own local concern and action is necessary and has far-reaching consequences. We all have a part to play. Each and every one of us in the routines, choices and decisions of our everyday lives and our aspirations for the future. The actions of parishes, families, schools and individuals will have a significant impact on our efforts to restore our common home. There are now many resources freely available to advise us on our choice of food, saving of water and electricity, suggestions about travel, waste and reuse. These are measures that everyone can employ in some degree with minimal inconvenience and change. They are effective ways in which we can each affirm our personal vocation to be stewards of God's creation. This Pentecost comes at a time of remarkable challenge and opportunity. We are gradually emerging from the tragedies and restrictions of the pandemic. We have the ability to make changes. Our countries are also hosting two most important meetings this year, the G7 in June and the COP26 in November. These meetings will gather together men and women who have the power to make defining choices and policies which will help us build back together provide for our brothers and sisters, and take care of our common home. In all our human endeavours, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, whose gift to the Church and to the world we celebrate again at Pentecost. Let us keep this feast with that enduring hope that we can begin to repair the damage we have done and provide a healthy home for future generations. Our hope will be strengthened by our prayer. May our constant request be that the Holy Spirit guide us, strengthen and resolve, strengthen our resolve and renew the face of the earth.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them in your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in the profession of one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, 
the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.